um, but it is true that um, there are not a lot of places that you can park in this village um, for more than four hours. Um, you have got to move your vehicle regularly. And if it's three or four blocks away and you got to move it, um, that's really an inconvenience. Sure. Um, and, that's not a, and that's not an inconvenience that at this time, as, a, as an administrator, I feel comfortable imposing sure. that upon my staff. Sure. Um, offering it as an option and encouraging it, um, I suppose one could even incentivize it if that were set as a priority. Um, but again, to my point earlier, um, by finding some spaces off-site that were within a block, um, that would free up parking spaces. Um, you know, real real quick math. If we if one, uh, if if we can get six spaces off site, that could clear up potentially 48 spots in the right. lot. You know, with, with factoring in that turnover. Um, but it's gonna it's gonna vary. I mean, if our priority in our strategic plan is to enhance uh, our programming, um, we want to provide attractive things so that our our public can consume here. Great. So they're gonna be parking in the lot. And they're going to be circling around because a lot of people want to attend that event. Um, we just we have a fixed number of spaces, and there's not a lot of other options in the area. So it, it is kind of at a fever pitch for us, you know, where we've got a conflict between what our strategic plan is and where the public is, you know, like satisfied with what they're seeing and they want more. Um, but we have no parking. The parking hasn't increased. So is St. John's more of a permanent solution for our staff that can handle Not a it? permanent solution by any stretch. I think I think you know we, we'll have to we'll have to have that conversation. Um, but uh, I don't I don't think that that's a long term solution for us. I think we may be able to buy some time with that relationship. Um, but the church has its own initiatives and its own you know programs and, and whatnot that it needs to be able to guarantee parking for its own. Um, Constituents to use. Usually, just Sundays. No, I, I, no, I would say that's not true. Okay. The <laughs> Plus, they are also at from time to time talking about their own construction projects, which would limit parking or expanding their facilities right. in ways that might limit parking. They and haven't moved well, forward on some of those things yet, but it's on their agenda. Yeah. And, and just as another point of history, so to yeah, speak, please. when we put the pavers into the parking lot, which um, we were able to use St. John's on a more extensive basis, and at that time we explored what it was something that would be more consistent, and that's when we learned a lot about how we really overburdened them with what, what they had offered us. Oh, okay. So, we, you know, we kind of knew that we had kind of pushed a little with them, and, yeah. and we still have good relations. I mean, we have a good relationship with them, yeah. but, we, but it's not a, like, gotcha. like Director Austin said, it's not a... That's helpful. It's not a... It's not a um, a long -term solution, unfortunately. Yeah, There's also the been discussion of the <clears throat> former Mid Central printing lot, but right. no no progress has appeared visibly for the, for in the, way. For the Wilmot Public Library to purchase that lot? Well, no, the village has not been willing to oh, they own it. consider that. They, they own it. They own it. Yeah. Their intention mm -hmm. in their in their uh, master plan is that that's part of their metro parking deck mm -hmm. however the strip of shops along green bay that are also a part of that design um aren't about to be surrendered mm -hmm. and the when the um when the pavers were, were done was it ever considered I, I was asked if that was ever um considered to add a parking deck here on our new we've device. had that consideration a couple of times we actually had plans with the post office that the postal service's own architects had drawn up to have a combined facility with the post office um, the anthrax events following 9 11 caused that to disappear so the exposure to so many spots in one in a concentration of open spots well, that particular plan would have put all postal vehicles underground. It would have also cred uh, space for um, postal employees and library employees. Um, it was essentially a multi-level deck underground oh. with surface parking. Okay. Um, Do you know about as I line? said, it vanished when the sure. when the Security. anthrax yeah. issues yeah. occurred. Um, <clears throat> And the Postal Service uh, has not uh, entertained any such uh, possibilities since then. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I have another question, but I'll ask it at the committee meeting. 
<laughs> just uh, I just want to share on the uh, one of my hopes of the advocacy and partners committee is that we all get a chance to have some trustee to trustee relationship building uh, with the village and the school board and the uh, park district uh, that we get a chance to sort of open meeting it up and you know like a appropriate committee we can all go so it's a chance for all of us to get to know our fellow trustees and maybe help some of the communication so, you know get more Meet and greet. Right, just we should all be meeting and talking. Yeah. I, just, I just wanted everyone to be aware of that. Yeah, the challenge will be open meetings, meetings restrictions have to be adhered to simultaneous. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Where two or more are gathered. <laughs> yes, right. Mm. The Open yes. Meetings Act rates. The Open Meetings Act is with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. okay. And then I have one uh, old new business um, on the uh, Sunday staffing and Sunday hours issue. Um, I am hopeful that there is some uh, resolution. This is the one we talked about the Finance Committee that uh, there's been long time conversation about extending to the morning hours and that uh, we're currently paying time and a half on Sundays. And I am hopeful that by winter time, uh, there is a, a recommendation for the board to act upon that can uh, extend hours Sunday morning. Any hours that are extended are gonna be based on, you're doing audits now, but you really don't have, and I know that Heather did one, but she didn't on Sunday morning. But one challenge may be getting the staff to come earlier on Sunday morning. I, I understand a lot of challenges, yeah. but whatever your recommendation is, I just wanted to flag it that, you know, summer's coming to an end, and the I think the real value of Sunday mornings, particularly for young families, is uh, being able to come here when there's no outdoor play space and take advantage of those wonderful youth opportunities. So I wanted to flag it publicly that that's something I hope we can try to make some progress on in the fall so we can make a go or no go decision for the winter. I think a survey would be mm -hmm. in place to ask what the constituents want and the likelihood of them doing those out, you know, in sure. terms of what their hour preferences are. Yeah, what, that'd be great. Okay. And I, we had tried it once before uh, recently, um, Anthony, and, and I thought that the questions didn't quite They answer. weren't right. They, they didn't weren't, yeah, break so, down. So, yeah, if you want any feedback, if you can handle on your own, great. If, if you want feedback, we're happy to give it to you. Great. So, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> any, any other business? Uh, I'll motion okay. to adjourn. Thank you. I second that one. So moved. Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you. Aye. Roll call. Aye. Roll call? No. Aye. Aye. All right. Anybody opposed? <laughs> yeah.